No Knows Knows Written by Irrespective Chapter 21 Wisteria and Quill Wisteria Inkwell flipped idly through the papers on her trusty clipboard, carefully reviewing the upcoming day's events and ensuring that she had everything she needed to discuss with her employer. The day had been eventful, she had to admit, but all that remained was some quick confirmations and to file her paperwork before heading home for the evening. She was eager to slip off the flower-faced collar she wore that established her as Princess Celestia's secretary, Adi Kamp, and the overall right hoof mare, warm up the leftover broccoli salad that was in her icebox, and then slip into her favorite plush robe and vanish into the pages of latest Love Lost novel. Such was her life, and she was pleased to have it. Becoming Celestia's secretary had been a combination of hard work, persistence, and a bit of sheer dumb luck, but it also entailed long days and the occasional long night. Prissy nobles with their heads in, well, never mind that, and dealing with some of the most frustrating and oddball circumstances one could imagine. There was prestige in her employment, but there was also more than enough figurative mud for her to wade through any given day. Yet, Wisteria never felt like she was underappreciated, and she flopped past all the pages on her faithful organizational tool to look at the custom engraving at the bottom right corner. For Wisteria, the pony who looks after me and what I treasure most. A small smile tugged on her lips. The clipboard had been a gift from the princess on the fifth anniversary of her employment, and it was now one of her most treasured possessions. It was a fine thing, made of premium tarnish-free silver and with Celestia's emblem embossed on the back in colorful gemstones. It had a spot for a spill-proof inkwell, extra metal quill holders, and the princess had personally imbued it with an enchantment that kept it from being lost or stolen. Of course, the three weeks extra paid vacation, which she still not had taken, and the anniversary bonus in her paycheck had been most welcome too, but it was touching that Celestia had taken the time to have this custom clipboard made, and to have it engraved with her own horn. It was the respect and appreciation that she received from her employer that kept her here. Her skill set was impressive enough that she could find employment in the private sector and receive twice her current salary, but then there would be no Princess of the Sun. Celestia was an amazing pony, even from a distance, but when one was able to work up close with her, as she had done, one quickly saw her as far more than just a princess. She was a mentor, a teacher, a friend, and a role model of the highest quality. Celestia seemed to be able to naturally bring out the best in any pony she interacted with, and had so thoroughly inspired and motivated Wisteria that she had willingly taken on more responsibilities, even at the expense of her family, friends, or even potential special sum ponies. Celestia was the pony that others inspired to be, and Wisteria gladly did all she could to make sure Celestia's light could shine as brightly as possible. Wisteria then shook her head while her mind drifted back to the events of last week. She had been beyond shocked to find that Celestia had written a law that forced the royal self into marriage, only if the oddest circumstances occurred, and that some stupid stallion had somehow managed to stumble right into it. There had been several all-nighters involved in keeping the news from getting out across the whole castle staff, and then the general public. She had lied, fibbed, stretched the truth, obfuscated, misdirected, begged, pleaded, bribed, cajoled, whined, cried, and in one particular instance, used a piece of blackmail she never wanted to think about ever again. She had run herself nearly to a nervous breakdown trying to keep ahead of the rumors and the tabloids, and there had been more than a few times when Mysteria had begged Harmony, Fate, or whatever had done this to help Celestia find the loophole, or legality, that would help them all get out of this mess and get life back to normal. Leave it to her boss to write a perfect, irreversible law when in a panic. Mysteria had personally gone over it herself and couldn't find a single fault in it. Wisteria's rage at the yellow freeloading scoundrel had multiplied tenfold in the day of their wedding. The mere thought of her illustrious highness being forced to become Celestia Bean was enough to make the secretary's blood boil and her vision to go red. With Celestia's name being debased as it was, there was no doubt for far-reaching negative consequences, and the male menace didn't seem to have a clue as to what he was really doing to the whole of Equestria. Then the divorce had come to light. She had gleefully written the decree out with her own quill, using every single bit of willpower she had left to keep from dotting all the eyes with a little smiley face. She was a bit concerned while taking down Celestia's every word. She personally found the terms to be far too generous, but she let it slide with the happy thought that this would finally clear out the riffraff and allow Celestia to get back to what she really needed to focus on, her ponies. But then he hadn't signed it. 
the fool wanted to try to make the relationship work, and Wisteria had been even more floored when she found that Celestia didn't want to sign the decree either. What was the world coming to? Celestia should have forced him to sign it and then thrown him out without another thought. He was naive, he was uneducated, he was totally unprepared to accept the role of prince. He wasn't even all that attractive either. Wisteria had rapidly summed up his look as ordinary and plain. What Celestia had seen in him was far beyond her. If she was going to marry, then she would at least find someone whose beauty matched her own. The Baron of Fetlock, for example. Now there was a stallion. Oh, mama. But Stay the Bean did, and Wisteria had found herself with a new boss. For the first time in her career, she dragged her feet and resisted following her prince's instruction to help Bean acclimate and to keep him on schedule with the goings-on in the palace. She was forced to work with the clown, and while she didn't like it to any degree, she hesitantly agreed to weather the storm for the princess. But then she talked with him, watched him work. He wasn't anything like she had expected, and in a good way. He was reserved, thoughtful, and observant. He treated Celestia with deep concern and odd reverence. He actually cared about her. And in the day-to-day -day grind of dealing with the royal bundit cakes that made up the courts and ministries, Wistoria found that he maintained a polite humility that gave a blast of fresh air to everything. And within a short amount of time, Big Bean won her over as well. What he lacked in birthright, he more than made up for in true royalty and pure character. Wisteria chuckled a bit to herself as she rounded the final corner to Celestia's, or now Celestia and Bean's, chambers, and she thought about the remarkable change that had come over her employer. Celestia was, of course, eternally pleasant and endlessly gracious to every pony she met. But now? It was like a switch had been flipped and the princess went about her day with a spring in her step, a song in her heart and on her lips, and an overflowing dose of happiness for everyone she encountered. She was brighter now, with more vigor and pep than Wisteria had ever seen before. Bait Bean had managed to bring out that set of Celestia that hadn't been seen in, well, maybe ever. He had brought out her youth again and the joyful optimism that naturally came with it. Wisteria adjusted her glasses, made sure her papers were in order, and then knocked on the door once before opening it with her magic. She then paused just inside the doorway. In the middle of the room stood Bean, in a regal-looking jacket that must have been in the earlier package that had arrived from Rarity. He was looking himself over in Celestia's full-length mirror, and Celestia was right next to him, admiring the view and whispering something in his ear. He did look rather proper, and yes, even royal in it, and she had to admit it, given the right clothing, he did have a sort of unassuming charm about him. Celestia then pulled back, and when she saw Bean's dopey expression, it was like, well, like he was so happy that his face could not smile it enough. Wisteria felt her heart metal a little at the sight. No matter what it took, she promised herself right then and there to do whatever she could to help their love blossom and grow. A love like this deserved no less. Wow. Bean remarked. Well, indeed, Celestia agreed. My dear husband, you look positively royal. I do believe the expression on my secretary's face says it all. Oh, what? Wisteria stammered, and her cheeks began burning. She quickly lifted her clipboard to block her face and her embarrassment, but again the inscription came to sight. The pony who looks after me and what I treasure most. Her smile grew bigger as the royals chuckled. She would be most pleased to continue to do so. Wisteria walked out of the royal chambers with a happy little tune. With the details for tomorrow now settled, she had only to file her paperwork and go home. But across the hall stood Corporal Quillpoint, and after a moment of thought, Wisteria adjusted her glasses and marched up to the gold-plated goof. Good evening, Miss Wisteria. What can I do for you? Quill asked. Quillpoint, I'm off in 15 minutes. Why don't you and I go get a drink tonight? Quillpoint hesitated. Protocol said he wasn't supposed to discuss personal things while on duty, but his eagerness to talk to her was obvious. But you've always rejected me in the past, he stiffly whispered. Say yes or no, going once. Yes, totally yes, he blurted, and then he quickly sealed up the crack in his composure. <laughs> Great. I'll go talk with Lieutenant Spearpoint about your schedule. You should take me somewhere classy, but not too expensive. If I see one pony with the title of Duke, Baron, Viscount, or Prince, I'm out. Wisteria then trotted away with a bounce in her step and a swish to her tail as she had not felt in years. If her boss could have a love life, why couldn't she? 
and in her wake, being careful not to be seen doing it, Corporal Quill Point punched in the air in silent success, then settled back into his relaxed guarding pose, only with a pleased smile on his face. Just a short side story today, I hope you guys don't mind, but man, I love No Nose Nose. It's such a cute and heartwarming story, and I can't wait to do more of it. That aside, however, I would like to thank my wonderful Patreons. Thank you, Squall Windfeather, Wande La Paz, Starlight Plays, Dreamless Portal, and Rain Flicker. Sword Brother and Mordred, Danish Dash, Nocturne, Solus, R.D. Bryant, Captain Blue Shadow, HKH4 aka Texture, and The Animated Ghost. And a big thank you to my new Patreon. Thank you, Canned Panzer, aka Trexy, my beloved. Thank you for your support. I love you. Hi. And of course, a large thank you to Silent Titan. I appreciate your guys' support so much, it means a ton to me, really. Anyways, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.